Hello friends, today we will discuss about dispersed system. A dispersed system is that in which one substance is dispersed as particles throughout another. It consists of two phases which are termed as dispersed phase and dispersion medium. Substance which is dispersed is dispersed phase and in which it is dispersed is known as dispersion medium. This system contains at least one dispersed phase. Dispersed phases are classified on two bases. First classification is on the basis of physical state of two substances. For example, fog, smoke, spray, dust, foam, etc. They all are differ from each other because of different physical states of their dispersed phases and dispersion medium. Second classification is on the basis of size of dispersed particles which is subdivided into three categories. First, molecular dispersion. In this, particle size is less than 10 raised to the power minus 6 mm. Second category is colloidal dispersion. Its particle size ranges from 10 raised to the power minus 6 to 10 raised to the power minus 3 mm. The last category of this system is coarse dispersion. In this, the particle size is larger than that of colloidal dispersion. When we classify objects on the basis of physical state, that means the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium of the system has varying physical state or we can say different state of matters. Each combination of different physical state particles form a new dispersion system. Any of these dispersed phase, dispersion medium or both will change every time they form a different dispersion system. The resulted dispersion system can be either colloidal or coarse dispersion. Dispersion medium can be either a solid, liquid or a gas. Same as dispersed phase can be either a solid, liquid or a gas. When dispersed phase and dispersion medium both are solid, then solid suspensions are formed, for example, pigmented plastics. When a solid dispersion medium and a liquid is the dispersed phase, then solid emulsion, for example, cold creams are formed. When we choose gas as a dispersed phase and solid as a dispersion medium, then they are responsible for the formation of solid foam. For example, expanded polystyrene. It is a kind of plastic. Next is when we choose dispersion medium as a liquid and accordingly we choose solid dispersed phase, then they form suspensions. Example, calamine lotion. If dispersed phase is liquid in a liquid, then it is responsible for the formation of emulsion. Example, milk, pharmaceutical emulsions, etc. When the dispersed phase is gas, which is dispersed in a liquid, then the formulation will be a foam. For example, surfactant solution, it forms a high amount of foam. It is a combination of gas in a liquid. Next one is when dispersion medium is a gas and dispersed phase is a solid, it is responsible for solid aerosols. Example, smoke, dust, we can also say that they are dry aerosols. Next one is when the dispersion medium is gas and dispersed phase is liquid, then they are responsible for liquid aerosols. For example, fog, mist, or we use um, perfumes we use, that's it. And at last, when both the phases are gas, that means uh, dispersion medium and dispersed phase, both are gases, then no formulation will be formed. In this classification, dispersed system are characterized on the basis of particle size. It defines whether the system will be homogeneous or heterogeneous in character. Particle size is also responsible for its diffusion rate. Particle size also affects the appearance of the dispersed system such as turbidity, clearance, etc. Now have a look at comparative characteristics of dispersed systems. First one is molecular dispersion, colloidal dispersion and third one is coarse dispersion. When we talk about their character or their nature, then molecular dispersions are homogeneous character. They are also known as true solutions. Colloidal dispersions show heterogeneous character. That means both phases can be separated. And the last one is coarse dispersion. Coarse dis dispersion are also heterogeneous in character. Second um, basis is their size. 
on the basis of size molecular dispersion has size less than 10 raised to the power 6 mm or we can say 1 nanometer colloidal dispersion has size between 10 raised to the power 6 mm to 10 raised to the power minus 3 mm that means 1 nanometer to 0.5 micrometer next one is coarse dispersion its size is larger than the colloidal dispersion that means more than 0.5 micrometer next is their visibility under a microscope that means dispersed phase is visible under a microscope or not so in molecular dispersion the dispersed phase is invisible under an electron microscope in colloidal dispersion a electron microscope can show the dispersed phase and in coarse dispersion it can be easily visible under a microscope next one is their diffusion rate Molecular dispersions are true solutions and because of very less particle size, they are rapidly diffusible. They can diffuse very rapidly through a semi-permeable membrane. As we talk about colloidal dispersion, they diffuse at a slower rate, but in case of coarse dispersion, they do not diffuse at all. Last one is a few examples of these dispersion systems. First one is uh, molecular dispersion oxygen molecules glucose etc are the examples of molecular dispersion in case of colloidal dispersion milk and cheese are very good examples of colloidal dispersions and last coarse dispersion in this blood cells pharmaceutical emulsions suspensions which can be easily separable and easily visible under a microscope are the few examples of coarse dispersion next one is shapes of colloid particles Colloid particles can be available in a wide range of shapes. For examples, first one is it can be present as spheres and globules, as short rods and prolate ellipsoids, as long rods and threads, as flakes or maybe 